שלום רעת בריא, אהו. ומקרא, כן, אגזיה ויהר יסמא. What does that mean, brothers and sisters? במקרא, כן, in the day of trouble, in the day of hardship, really in the times of tribulation, the days of tribulation. The Bible calls the days of tribulation, which you've probably heard many Christians and many others, both in truth and sincerity, as well as those who have ministered in pretense. Because we give joy that, and, and we are joyful that everywhere the good news of Christ is preached, whether it is in sincerity and truth, directly, uprightness, or even whether some might try to dabble in it pretentiously. Because all things work towards the good of those who love Jah and who are called according to his purpose. You understand? So there's no weapon. We went over in um, the Midbar, you understand, um, um, uh, Bela'im uh, or Bela'am, you understand, Bela'am, Balaam, right? And even how he, you know, was sent to curse, but he could not curse. So even those who are in the cult, you understand, truly recognize that authority. They don't like it. You understand? They, they, they have um, sold their souls, many of them, but they recognize that they know the authority of God. They know the authority of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of our black Lord and Savior. How do we know that? We know because they try to avoid it. Whenever we speak the truth of our black Lord and Savior, they always try to tell us something to stop talking about, well, it doesn't matter what color he is, you understand, but it does. It doesn't matter what race he is, but it does. It don't matter the throne of David is in Ethiopia, but it does. It doesn't matter that Kedemawi, Haile Selassie is the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, but it does. You understand? Now, the, the reasoning has come up that, well, 120 years of his majesty, or the earth strong, which is this year, you understand, um, 20, 2012, you overs, and ones will say, well, so what? You understand, I mean, what's the significance? And some would even quote Genesis chapter 6 and 3. And if you believe them, they would say, well, Genesis chapter 6 and 3 has nothing to do with God. It's not speaking of God. You understand, it's speaking of that sinful generation, they'll say, Right? It's speaking of that sinful generation, and they, do, they don't go into too much details because they really haven't studied and shown themselves approved. Because if they did, then if they go into the details, like some of the documents we have been mentioning, we've been mentioning this right here, um, the Kuvr Neges, and this is the version that we publish, right? Um, the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Minulik, right? Or the Kuvr Neges, the glory of the kings. And if you go to chapter of this document, if you go to chapter 100, right, chapter 100 will teach us, this is our own resource, our own Ethiopic resource, not really known until uh, these latter days and times in the Western Hemisphere, not known by Western Christianity, you understand, by so-called Roman Catholic Christianity and any of her daughters, Protestantism or any of the other denomination, so forth, and so on. So we turn to chapter 100. Let's look at chapter 100 for a moment, because we have to study and show ourselves approved, and we want to prove to you that the 120 does refer in the mystery of God and Christ to God. It does refer to the Father. It does refer to Abba Kedus. It does refer to Kedamawi, Haila Shalase, or Haila Selase first, all right, and in the previous um, lecture, we touched on Revelation, the, we touched on the Son of Man, the prophecies concerning the Son of Man, because it is very, very significant to see how Christ, Yeshua himself, the Son, you understand, the Son, the Father and the Son is one, right, yet Christ says that no man bears witness to me except, except the Father, that's very interesting to say. But what does he mean? What's the context? He says, no one bears perfect witness, a, a perfect likeness and a witness, you understand, to 
him to Christ according to the word, according to the spirit, according to the truth, but the Father. And now we see in the Father, you understand, know in the Father of righteous and modern Africa, you understand, know and the Father of Ainai Rastafari Kedus Abatachin or Abba Kedus, we see in him that Christ spirit, that spirit of Christ. We study his works, his doings, and how he dealt with the children of humanity, and we see that it's that grace, because he was able to go, you understand, where others were not able to go, and to bring the light and the illumination of Christ, and to fulfill that prophetic word that we find in John's Gospel. Now, what is that prophetic word we find in John's Gospel? Let us go to John's Gospel, and let us find that prophetic word. Now, we touched on Genesis chapter 6 and 3, right? And we just finished touching on the word strive. Because it says, my spirit should not always strive with man, for that he, right, is, is, is a tw 120 years. It says, my spirit will not always strive with man, right, with man. And it says, um, for that he also, the hundred, that he also is flesh, yet his days, shall be an hundred and twenty years. Now, how does this connect? You have to remember that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Remember the word says that when many read the Old Testament, they read it with a veil over their eyes. Remember when Christ says that hearing, they hear but don't understand, and seeing, they see, but they don't perceive. But if they are able to hear to Shema, you understand? Then they'll be able to see. If they're able to see, they'll be able to perceive. If they're able to perceive, then they can be, the King James Bible says, converted. But that really means that they can go from darkness or ignorance to the light or the illumination of the King of Kings and his Christ, to, to the, the, the way, the truth, and the life. You understand? The way, the truth, and the life. And then seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, right? And all other things, and his righteousness, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. Excuse me. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And his righteousness. Because it says that the Israelites, our lost sheep, or even today, they seek to establish their own righteousness. That in spite of what the King of Kings teaches us concerning the faith and concerning the foundation of faith, concerning Yeshua HaMoshiach as our perfect example or template, even some of the more cryptic verses of Kedemawi Haile Selassie, like the Oriana Falachi interview, you understand what she kept asking him about death, and, you know, he answered her, but then he, you know, after a while, you know, he just dismissed her. But in that interview, he said that it gave him great pleasure to, to be emperor, or to be king of kings, Nagusha Nagesh, or Nagusha Nagesh, the Ethiopia, to serve Ethiopia, right, as a father serves his son. That's very interesting, because normally in the world, it, you know, we find that the son would serve the father in that sense. But here we find Nagusha Nagesh, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, saying that it gives him great pleasure and, uh, to be emperor of Ethiopia, you know, saying, so that he can serve his son, or it's as a father serving his son. Now, that is very cryptic. We know that his match, he never denied his Christhood. Mm -hmm. And in particular with Rastafari, this is, this is particularly true. But now, let's, let's touch on this verse right here, uh, about where his majesty fulfills this in a real time, right, in John's Gospel. Let's go to John's Gospel, right? And in John's Gospel, it speaks about the threefold work of the Spirit. Those who says the threefold work of the Spirit, John's Gospel, chapter 16. The threefold work of the Spirit towards the world, right? Verses 7 to verse 11. It says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. He tells us the truth, right? It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter, the Atanany, the Atanany. Now, the word Atanany is very interesting. Because it does mean to comfort in, in, in that spiritual and psychological sense. It's a, it's a comfort to us. 
because Satan, this evil world system, you know what I'm saying, tries to use the, the shame and tries to use you're not good enough and tries to use a lot of worldly means to separate us from the love of God, from the love of the Father and the Son, from, from the true love of Jah. You know what I'm saying? And, and because Satan, Yehun, is a hater of humanity. He hates humanity. He hates all humanity. In this last manifestation of this evil world system, he has used white supremacy. He has deceived white people, Europeans, the Gentiles. I mean, even the whole idea of, quote, white supremacy, if you know the science behind it, you know it's a deception. It's a deception. You know, they believe a lie. So some people think it's a black and a white thing, but it actually goes much, much deeper. Even the so-called white man, the Gentile, has been deceived. Right? But it says right here that the comforter will not come to you if your shoe did not go away. But he says, but if I depart, I will send him to you. Now, many people say, well, the comforter is not a man. The comforter is a spirit. But does not the spirit of God dwell in man? You understand? Does not the spirit of God, right, dwell in man, especially in a Christ man? In fact, in a Christian? In fact, in every Christian, by, by principle of the word, the Spirit of God is to dwell in us. You understand? And if it's not dwelling in us, then we need to do our work. We need to do our homework. Because he said that the work of God is to, and King James says, believe, but Bamarinya is my men. My men is to have our main, right? To have our main, to have imnet in he who is the our main, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Now, in and through the King of Kings, you understand, and in the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach, we as faithful and elect Rastafari are that new creation in him. You understand, we are that new creation, we are that new people, we are that people for his name. Yet, we have to do our homework. You understand, we have to do our study. You understand? So we'll know within his economy, within Kedamawi, Haile Selassie's spiritual and real economy, something that, or the spirit, that's, that's real things to do. These are those who, who, who still even unconsciously are worshiping the false gods of intellect and the false gods of materialism. They don't recognize that the spirit has authority over all of that. For example, you might have the capacity or capability to do whatever, but if somebody makes you believe, you're not, you can't do it. You understand? Because faith comes by hearing. So if you've heard negative over and over and over and over again, even though you have the ability, you understand, nothing is tying you down physically, you understand, but it's that, that spirit of doubt. So you need to be comforted, you need to be strengthened by the truth. That's why he says that those who have his word, that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a great mystery. It's a great um, mishtia, you know what I'm saying? But that mystery, the word says, will be fulfilled in these latter days and times. So he, Christ says that he must go forward. Then verse 80 says, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. When he is come. So it's both speaking about the spirit. You understand? As well as that manifestation of the Spirit in that chosen vessel. Who is that chosen vessel? That chosen vessel in these latter days and times is and was and will be Lij Tefari. Right? But see, Lij Tefari is a type of I and I, the faithful and true in I and I. Because when we are born again, we are like a child. You understand? We are like a child. You understand? But this is the man-child, the man-child that was to rule all nations. And the word clearly says concerning the man-child that he was, he was snatched up to God and to his throne. Mm -hmm. To God and to his throne. What does this mean? Well, Kedemar, we have Selassie's own testimony, and testimony that we have according to um, Timothy White's Catch a Fire. You know what I'm saying? With the, with the Ethiopian priest who came in to inquire, where did his majesty, or where did Lij Tefari, where did the man child, where did he get all this knowledge from? How did he know these things? And he told them how he knew these things, based on that baptism, you know what I'm saying? based on that christening, 
everything in creation became clear to him. Do you get the key word? Everything in creation, in iration. Now read Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. It tells us of the Amen. The Amen. It says that he is the same, he, he, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? He's the same in, in those three time states. Because to him, time basically is an illusion. You know, and time is an illusion. Time is only, quote, real, in a sense, to us in this order or arrangement. In fact, we're coming to a day and a time where there would be time no longer. Revelation says there will be time no longer. So if you study the whole 2012 thing and even some of the Da Vinci things and, and then from some of the different, some of the different um, um, witnesses, you understand, you will recognize that it's like all the, all the spokes on the, the wheel are about to come off. You understand? All the spokes on the wheel are about to come off. So let us understand this now from the, scriptural, from the scriptural perspective and from our resource, from our divine, from our divine heritage. So here it says, it says that when he is come, he will reprove the world of what sin and of righteousness and of judgment. We see this reproof in real time, no parables. It says that he won't speak a parable, you understand? But he has given us a parable to those who are his disciples, as a morit. And he's given us the keys to understanding these mysteries of the kingdom. So it should not surprise us that some probably don't get it, and some might not get it. And those who do get it only get it through the Spirit, you understand? Only through the Spirit of God and Christ. So it says that when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. His majesty, Kedamawi Haila Shalasi, has reproved the world of all three of those. They have a very real, you understand, and abiding testimony. It's like a judgment. Now we see since 74 and 75, we've seen the detour you understand, the radical departure and detour of the whole world global course. We can see that clearly even in the United Nations. You understand? When we should have been that generation, you understand, and those previous generations, we still needed to be taught again. We still need to learn again because we were not fully, like we are not fully using and utilizing those divine resources, those resources of faith. You know what I'm saying? Those resources of our ancient Ethiopic um, culture, you know what I'm saying? The documents, the testimonies, and learning the other half of the story that was not told to us, right? Now, it says in verse 9 of sin, of chat right, of missing the mark, you know what I'm saying? chat an old Ethiopic word similar to matat. Matat means to miss. It says, my people perish because of a lack of. So the word lack of knowledge is the very same root as the word for sin in the Ethiopic, because of a lack of. A lack of. It says, because they believe, or they ma men, they do not have a faithful, a true, and a faithful witness on me. They don't have a faithful and true witness on who is the he there. The he there is speaking of Yeshua HaMoshiach. So Yeshua is saying that I must go so that that spirit, right, the comforter, that spirit of truth will come, right, will come. Now that is both the Holy Spirit and the particular end time manifestation of the fatherhood of God in the person of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. And Kedamawi Haile Selassie does not bear witness of himself. You understand? His majesty did not bear witness of himself. He bore witness of Jesus Christos, both in word and in living deed and living action. But here's the key places that he bore witness, right, of Christ's word. He bears witness on Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? Both the physical manifestation, you understand, as the Ethiopian, as that black man, as that one who is a true Jew, a black Jew, like Jesse, the blackest Jew the world ever knew, because of that racial identity as well. You know, because of the lies and of the devil, you know, and white supremacy and whitewashing and, and, and false Jesus or Antichrist, Caesar Borgias, his majesty has come bearing witness of Jesus Christos, both in spirit, 
the spiritual, the word, you understand, in his spirit, you understand, and in truth, in his deed, and in his person. His majesty bears witness of Jesus Christos in his very person, in his very being. You understand, this is why the Rastafari were able to see this. They were able to hear the word, they were able to see it, they were able to perceive this, and so, many of, so much of the world was not. Because Christ said that in those days and time, right, it's those first fruits. Who were those first fruits? You understand? Many of us, you know, have reasoned on this that many of the Rastafari and the first Rastafari, they remind us of, 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 of New Testament people, of New Testament disciples. You understand? I mean, we, we almost see the Bible coming to life again in a three-dimensionality, a reality for us. Verse 10 says, now, of righteousness, the second thing that he's going to reprove the world of, because I go to what? My Father. You understand? I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Now, that's very interesting that, that Yeshua HaMoshiach says that he goes to what? He goes to his Father, right? He goes to his Father, and we see him no more. Now, in our studies on this, we've already showed that there is a mystery, a mishtir, right, that was to be revealed that was not fully known. Now, we see this a lot, actually, in the New Testament, that there was a certain Judaic belief. In other words, it was not Judaism in principle that was wrong, but they had a lot of denominations that almost became like demon nominations. You know, they had the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Zealots, the Herodians, the Essenes. They had these different type of groups, you know, saying all of them, in a sense, emanating, or all of them um, branching would be a better word. You know, all of them branching, you know, from that Judaic tree, you know, saying, but many of them going opposite, you know, saying, of the Word of God. That's why Christ said, your traditions have made the Word of God of no effect, of none effect, void. You know, saying, because they were following traditions. We see the same thing creeping into the Ethiopian church. You understand, even in the time of, of, of Ras Tesari Mekonin, you understand, if you read his Matthew's autobiography, he's giving instructions to the church. He was making reformations in the church according to the word. He was saying to them that, listen, you're doing this and that, but the word speaks like this. But our ancient documentation, even the whole crowning and marriage that we have in our Ethiopian church, the Ethiopic church, is because of Kedemawi Haile Selassie's Reformation. The Metaf Kedus, which is the true authorized Bible. This is the Bible to be used in all Ethiopian churches. You understand? However, we have an apostasy. An apostasy means a heresy or a falling away. You know, saying 1974 and 75 proved that falling away. I think it was Tewuflos, one of the Abunas, that basically did not bless the emperor. You know, saying did not bless the royal family. I think it was the 12th of uh, September 1970, what was it, 4 or so? When, you know, in other words, every Ethiopian New Year, September 11th or so, except for leap years, then it's 12th, like this year. It is, a, it is a 12th, too. It's also a leap year, 2012, which is very significant and very interesting as well. But um, instead of blessing the emperor, he blessed the derg. You understand? He blessed the provisional government. Speaking about that particular Ethiopian um, bishop, archbishop, you understand, or Ethiopian pope, if you please. Now, that was a sign to many. You understand? That was a sign to many that something had gone wrong. You know what I'm saying? And we will prove as the evidence is there, you know what I'm saying, what has gone wrong. Now you have to blame Hala Selassie, the first crowd. Even some of the brothers and sisters out there that um, are doing certain work, but mainly a lot of the brothers, like this particular brother right here. We love him. You know what I'm saying? This brother right here, um, Nabora Id. Nabora Id Aramias. Aramias. You know what I'm saying? That was the keeper of Aksum, you know what I'm saying, from such and such a time, right? But um, he wrote a book right here, you probably know this book right here, Ethiopia Classic Case. But what we have is a classic case of what another author, is another author, let's see if we have his book, another author right here wrote this book, which is Betrayal of Ethiopia. You understand, basically showing how there was this generation 
that turned away, you know what I'm saying? Just like it said that in the latter days there will be perilous times. You know what I'm saying? And this author right here has written this excellent this excellent book right here, um, The Betrayal of Ethiopia, and half of it's in Amharic and half of it's in English, but still from the English part there's, 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 there's much there that we need to learn from it. So we have these two different Ethiopians. Though this man right here, Nabora Id, you're saying Nabora Id, um, Ermias, Kabeta, um, um, Ermias, uh, Kabeta World Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Although he has much good knowledge concerning the church and he defends the black principle or the Ethiopian principle, the, the humanity of Christ, he's one of those who say that his majesty was responsible for the for, for he created a, a generation, right? And that this generation was he created it and, and, and he created this evil generation. That's 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 this particular author's basic overall perspective. So on many points and issues, instead of laying the blame upon the people and upon that careless generation, you understand, he blames our Godfather and King of Kings. In other words, like this author says he, you know, there's a generation which bit the hand that fed them. You know what I'm saying? So this is just to demonstrate, because we want to touch on the, the blame Hala Selassie crowd, because a lot of Ethiopians out there who, who I, I think mean well, or, or they intend well, but it seems like they have been um, uh, dispolarized. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and therefore they are, they are almost bipolar in a sense, double-minded when it concerns the King of Kings. And we know that double-mindedness is, is a hot yacht. It is a sin. It's a missing of that mark, that doubt. You know, as it says in um, um, Matthew, the, the Great Commission, that, that there were the 11 um, disciples. They had came and they had bowed. You understand? Know, they worshiped, but it says some doubted. So even those who can say high things of his majesty sometimes doubt. Now that doubt can and should be answered. By knowledge, he said, "You shall know the truth." Um, um, but trust, you know, you, you have to trust the reality that you, you recognize. Ethiopia in 40 years, you understand the 40 years of his imperial majesty. That in itself was a miracle. You understand? You mean one bringing one education and teaching one, and then them going astray while he maintaining a council. You understand the wonderful counselor? If they don't listen, like Bob Marley even said, Burhana Salase, Shalase said, he said that they don't know God in his imperial palace in Ethiopia and them suffer and dead. You understand? There were many people in the time of Elijah, Elisha, you understand? Many lepers in Israel, many w widows, you understand? But you have to notice that there were certain ones who received it, even in Nazareth, where Yeshua was born and grow, so to speak or not born and grow, but where he grew up, let's say, you know, um, there were ones who did not accept as true the manifestation, you know what I'm saying, so therefore he had to leave, so he cannot do many miracles there for those people who could not receive what they already, you know, what they could not hear, what, what they heard, but they did not, they, they did not understand, you know what I'm saying, they, they saw, but they did not perceive, therefore they could not go from from, from, from darkness, from ignorance, to enlightenment, and Christ could heal them. You know what I'm saying? And Christ could heal them. Now, here in the threefold work of the Spirit towards the world, it says the righteousness, right, of Siddiq, because I go to Abate. I go to Abate, my Father, and ye see me no more. I think that's very, very interesting. Because he said, you shall see me. But not see me, you know, in a certain time. And the disciples ask, what do you mean by this? We can't understand what a little time means, right? And when Christ explains it in the same chapter, he's explaining it in the context, right, the context of, of, of a woman when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour is come, but as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. Now, when you compare this with Revelation, some say, well, Revelation was talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. It is using the birth of Jesus Christ as a, as a template for some manifestation that would come thereafter. Remember, the book tells us about not things which have already happened, 
in the time that it was revealed, it's telling us of things that were to come. So this is not telling us right here of Christ's birth because he already was born, but it's speaking of the birth of another one. You understand? Not another one. Let's not say no other one, but the birth of the Son of Man. You understand? Know because it's spoken in that language, and we know that Lich Teferi is the Welda Mekonin. He's the son of Makonin. But who is Mekonin? Mekonin, the name itself means judge, right? An officer, a judge. You understand? Know it's the same. It's a singular of what's used in Psalm 68:31, where it says, Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hand to God. Where it says, Mekwanan kagibet yewet alu, Ethiopia, Joshua, wode egziyavi her zergalich. You understand that particular verse right there. But let's go forward right here. So he says two things so far of sin, because what? Because they did not admit the truth on Yeshua HaMoshiach. Secondly, righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. The interesting link of righteousness is Siddiq, is Hedek, and Melchizedek Hedek also is evident there as well. In verse 11, it says of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Now who is the prince of this world? Now we know the prince of this world, is, it says elsewhere, is the prince of the ear. You understand? Know we know that, that Satan or Diablos is the false god or the god of this seclorum, of this world system. You understand? Know Even Yeshua HaMoshiach said that my kingdom is not of this world. You understand? Know the world tried to snatch the imperial kingdom of Haile Selassie, but they could not even snatch that. Most folks only perceive what was really going on, you understand, know during the creeping coup. You understand? Because the creeping coup is the Illuminati, is the Satanistic crew. Coup. You understand? The crew and the, uh, and the coup. You understand? But they were not able to. And when you look at what happened in Ethiopia, 74 and 75, and look at Donnell. Let's look at Donnell's prophecy uh, again. Because it's very important. Because here we're going to understand the link and the connection with the Ancient of Days. Right? With the Ancient of Days. And if we don't understand this, you understand, then we will be without understanding. Here's what it says right here. The final world empire, the kingdom of heaven. And this is Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Verse 44, right? And it says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. So he set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. You know, then the kingdom of Nagusa Neges, the, the, the imperial Ethiopia kingdom of his imperial majesty, was not left to no one else, and it was not destroyed. It was not destroyed. You understand? Most folks will say, well, wh where is it? You understand? Because they can't perceive the spiritual reality, because they don't want to accept a Rastafari. You understand? And I and I, it's Rastafari, those ones which kept the banner, the, the banner with the line of the tribe of Judah on the banner, testifying straight through that particular period of time to this present time. You understand to this present time. And that time, 81, 82, you understand, was the age of his imperial majesty. And this time it's 120. We're going to connect how this 120, 120 years does speak of the God-man. You understand? It's not just speaking of God because God is not limited to any particular number of years. You understand? But it is speaking of the manifestation. See, this is a part of the Mishtere, um, you understand, Shlase, the mystery of the Trinity, you understand, which is one of the five, right, one of the five um, um, pillars of the mysteries in the Tawahedo Beta Christian, in the Ethiopic Church, right? But check this verse out right here. This verse right here says that it shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Because we are Ethiopian. You understand? Even after 400 years. You understand? Those Ethiopians who know what that means should know what that means. That even after a thousand years, one who is a person of an inheritance, you understand? Um, one who has an inheritance, a land inheritance, 
even after a thousand years, because she ametu, what a rustu. He, he, go, he can go, he can enter into his inheritance if he is of faith, of course, because faith is the key thing. The Amen is the, is the key thing. Now, here it says, is the primary thing. It says, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. See, some don't see his majesty's kingdom. They, they look in Ethiopia, they see a, a, a Republican um, government. They say, well, it's not there. These are those who are limiting their view, you know, into the material, you know, into to the physical world, you know, into what they can just perceive on, on, the, on the shell game. You know, they're not going in and looking at the atomic or the atomic structure of it. They're not going in and looking at the quanta subject of it. You know, they're not going in and, and, and looking at that Higgs boson. You know what they're talking about? Um, the Higgs boson or the Higgs besom, like, like the Kana boson. You know, they're not looking at that God particle. You know what I'm saying? Because it seems too small. You know what I'm saying? Like his majesty seems small to certain people. So that he seems insignificant. You understand? But it says that Jah uses the foolish things to conquer the wise. He used the small things to conquer the great or the big. And we're seeing a manifestation. We're witnessing a manifestation in this very time. And it shall stand, it says, and it shall stand for how long? You understand? Know it shall stand forever. His imperial majesty's government still stands because I and I as Rastafari. You understand? Know as long as there's one Rastafari, as long as two or three Rastafari can come together and they wave that banner and they recognize that Kedamawi Haile Selassie is God and King of Kings. You understand? Know that government of God in Christ, it stands. You know what I'm saying? Now, the 120 years, we're going to deal with this right here. We dealt with it before. This is from the Kibbutz and the Guest, and it speaks on concerning the angels who rebel. Because what we wanted to touch on was this, this, this time span period. You know what I'm saying? This time span period where it speaks about 120 years. You know what I'm saying? We need to understand what the 120 years was all about from I and I root. So when we go to page 188, right, 188 of the Queen of Sheba and her son or her, her only son, Minulik, right, it says this right here. It says, um, the word of God, right, the word of Jah, the word of God conquered, conquered, not just will conquer, but has conquered. Not that we shall overcome, but we have already overcome. See, we have to be of that mind. You know, so we have to be of the, of the messianic, of, the, of, of Christ and his kingly character's mind. You know what I'm saying? So we can be on that spiritual ether, that, especially in these days of the great tribulation. Now the word of Jah conquered, who fashioned Adam in his likeness or form. And those who had reviled and made a laughing stock of Adam were conquered. Now this is to say that those who sought to make a laughing stock of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that they too were conquered. Those who try to deny and whitewash his true humanity, they were conquered. Those who have made a laughing stock of the lost black sheep, they also are conquered. You know what I'm saying? And it will be made manifest to them. See, it's already made manifest to us of faith, of the true Amen. It's already a reality. And we have to, as it says, let this mind be in you. Because as he is, as Yeshua is, so are we in the world. So how was Yeshua? That's how we are to be in the world. Now, if you doubt it, well, then it's not yours. You cannot receive it. You know what I'm saying? But if you accept that in spirit and in truth, it is yours. You know what I'm saying? It is yours. So it says right here that, and the daughters of Cain, the daughters of Cain, that's who is spoken of in Genesis chapter 6 as the daughters of men. You understand? Because the sons of God were the Sethites. You understand? The Sethites. You understand? Who remained on the mountain. You understand? Who did not go down to the lowland. Right? And the daughters of Cain, with whom it says the angels had companies conceived, but they were unable to bring forth their children, and they died. So it said that the angels had attempted something, the fallen angels, but this did not work. 
This is why when you study that whole thing about the fallen angels and the Philean, you recognize that there were, a, like through the book of Enoch, that there were a lot of um, experiments going on, you know, grafting. You know what I'm Now, why did they go to grafting and DNA splicing, these things that are newly known to this Gentile um, mankind today? It's because they could not give birth the so-called normal way. Now, we find that the same thing is going on even today, that many are having trouble giving birth in the so-called normal or God-given way and are resorting to science or technology to do it. You understand? So it says that, yes, these angels had company, right? They conceived, but they were unable to bring forth their children. Some would say, well, you see, that's the same thing there. No, it says that the, the sons of God bore, and these ones were known as men of old, men of renown. It cannot be, the, they, they could not be men of Shem. First of all, the, the, the children died, right? And of the children who were in their wombs, some died, and some came forth. How did some come forth? Having split open the bellies of their mothers, they came forth by their navels. And when they were grown up and reached man's estate, they became giants whose height reached to the clouds. And for their sakes and the sakes of the sinners, the hot iatenyots, the lackers, the wrath of God, became quiet. And he said, my spirit shall only rest on them for 120 years, and I will destroy them with the waters of the flood, them and all sinners who have not believed or admitted the word of Jah. Now, here's what we found out, that Noah actually ministered, right, and there's, and there's so-called apocryphal documents which are, to us are inspired. To, to European Christianity, to Gentile Christianity, works like this are not inspired. To them, works like the Gedla Adam are not inspired because it does not come from their preferred, their preferred, um, 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 their preferred sources or resources. You, you understand? Because they are still under that influence of Satan, which reviles man, which reviles the black man, and anything that we have, you notice how they always try to cut it down. They never can just admit. You understand? There was an hour where it seemed like they admitted certain things in the manifestation and time of his imperial majesty, but they have fallen away from that. They have apostated themselves from that. So it so says, those who my men, the word of their fathers, and did his will, no injury came from the waters of the flood. But he delivered them, saying, If thou admittest my word, thou canst save thyself from the flood. Now, here's what's really interesting about this. Right? Here's what's really interesting about this. It says, As the days of Noah were, right, in Matthew's gospel and in the prophetic gospel, uh, or the prophetic portion of the gospel, says that the, the last days shall be like the days of Noah. Right? Now, Noah preached and taught for about 120 years, right? There are several um, gospels and scriptures and inspired scriptures that basically teaches us that Noah, a preacher of righteousness, he preached for this particular 120 year time and space. Mm -hmm. Now notice how 120 years since Litz Tefari would bring us to 2012. Now, 2012, you already know from other sources like the Mayan calendar and, 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 and ones like um, Nostradamus and a lot of other resources, even now they're beginning to say, well, you know, the Bible also testifies to it. And more and more people are finding links, even finding the Biru in the scripture, the, the, the destroyer, you know, and this, this planetary object, um, some say a mothership could be, so forth and so on, um, is coming into this universe or already has had its influence and effect on this universe. If you notice the weather, look at the drought going on. You understand? Look at this drought going on. These are very prophetic things, and they're going to affect the immediate futures, you understand, of this particular humanity that we're in. This is why we have to get up to that metaphysical and spiritual um, receptivity. You understand? But it begins with the study. Otherwise, because we are spiritual, we can be spiritual, but we need to be guided. You know, and that's where the hymenote, the living faith, or 
poorly translated religion, you know what I'm saying, comes into effect. So Christ makes this link between the days of Noah mm -hmm, and the son of man or the man child. Right now we know that the man child becometh the God man. You understand? Know and we know also at the approximate time that this occurred. Lich Tafari testifies to himself. There was the Ethiopian priest and even the writer who is like a Luke in a sense. You understand? Know um, I say like Luke because it's a Greek and, and something that's a Euro connection, Timothy White. You understand? Know he testifies to it in the first chapter of his book on Catch a Fire on Bob Marley. And it's called, that first chapter is called Kingdom Come. Now notice what that chapter is named, Kingdom Come. Now what is, in the Our Father prayer, what do we pray for? To the Samayat, right? Yemitunor Rabata Chinhui. We pray that thy kingdom come. Thy what will be done on earth, right? On earth as it is in heaven. You know, in the ancients, when he said heaven, they were speaking of the heavens. But it's, in European Christianity, we get a false, a false picture of it, a false view of it through their European and um, Renaissance artists. You know, in, in, the, in the rise of the whitewash version, which the Bible says that another Jesus, another gospel, right, and another spirit, you understand, that Satan transforms himself. You understand, know, to be an angel of light, and his ministers transform themselves to be, to be ministers of righteousness. So it should not surprise us what has happened in European or counterfeit Christianity, because it's an outgrowth, an outworking, a manifestation. It's a manifestation of his word. So when we see this particular image right here, the counterfeit image, and we see that date right there, 1492, Right, and we add 100, uh, 400 years to that, right? We have another prophetic date that concerns Lij Teferi, that concerns the man child, right? And along with the man child, then we get a restoration, you know, saying, to the lost sheep of the Beit Israel. You know, saying, so many different movements of Hebrew peoples, right, were inspired, even though some of them now may not acknowledge that because they are still looking at the temporal. Manifestation. They can see the temporal. Remember, the temporal is is, is temporary. You understand? It's not forever. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not just the form of his majesty as the old man, right? It's not just the form of his majesty as the servant or as the prince. It's not just the form of his majesty as the child. You understand? But because he is who he is, you understand? We're getting those manifestations. We know that Jah uses parables. He uses stories to explain deeper mysteries. You know what I'm saying? Because when we were as children, when humanity was younger in its awareness or, or understanding after the fall of the black man, you know what I'm saying? That now we are rising once again to recognize the truth, you know what I'm saying, that was suppressed, that was buried. But we need to understand how this prophecy here links up. Now, are we saying... Are we saying that, well, it's all going to happen this year? No. We're saying that this year, 2012, is a turning point. You understand? But there's, then there's also the counterfeit. So we've got to avo avoid the counterfeit. So how do we avoid the counterfeit? The Word tells us that we have to try all spirits, try every spirit to see whether it is of God. But we first have to have and be informed and have to have His Spirit mingling with our spirit. And that can only be achieved by that repentance, that change of mind, and that new birth. You know what I'm saying? This is really serious. It's more than just going in the closet and praying, as some would say, gestimating, you know what I'm saying, or guesstimating on that particular level. But we understand that the counterfeit Christianity has done a terrible and awful job on many of our people, that it takes many of our people a while, you know what I'm saying, to really, as they say, wrap their thoughts. Not the mind, but the thoughts, that they're thinking around these seemingly new ideas, you know what I'm saying? But as you study, as you, as you be truthful, have a love, pray to Jah for a love of the truth. Pray to Jah for wisdom. Pray to Jah in faith and in the name of Yeshua for whatever you lack, you know what I'm saying? But also faith without works is dead. So, so let's recognize that faith and works, how they go together in his order of things. Now,
The next point is 120 years. Mm -hmm. Is a particular day and time. That particular day and time that we've been told about. What particular day and time are we talking about? We're talking about what they call it December. They say right over here. They say December, right? 21st, right? 2012. They say this is the end of the Mayan calendar, right? This signifies the end of the Mayan calendar. Well, we have Ethiopic prophecies and Ethiopic correspondences to those very same days and time. So let's go to page, um, in this particular book, let's go to page, um, page uh, 20, uh, well, well, not page 20, but, it's, but I think it's chapter 20, um, um, XXII, if I'm correct. I had highlighted it earlier. Give me a moment, my brothers and sisters. Um, where it speaks about the death of Jared, the death of Yared, right? It speaks about the 5,500 years, right, that they would be from the time of, from the time of, 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 of Adam, right, from the time of Adam to the manifestation of the Moshiach, of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let's see where, okay, here we go right here. It's on page 140. For those who might have a copy of this, you understand, or can get a PDF on the Internet, you, you, know, you can probably look at some of the text of it, right, the text of it. We'll give you the date. Also, if you have the other book, um, another book, uh, uh, Forgotten Books of the Bible, or Lost Books of the Bible and Forgotten Books of Eden, or Eden, you understand, it's also in there in the chapter or the book on Adam and Eve. Right, Adam and Eve, because this is the Gedla Adam, the conflict of Adam against Satan, the Ethiopic book of Adam and Eve, translated by Reverend C. S. C. Milan in 1882. Now, here in chapter um, 20, um, I think it's book 2, chapter 21, right, chapter 21, it's going to tell us about the, the, um, the death of, of, of Yared, right? The death of Yared. And the death of Yared occurred on the 12th of Tox, to, Toxus, Toxus, or Toxus, Toxus, right? On a Friday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is interesting? What is interesting is that the footnote here says that is the Ethiopic December. Whereas they say in the footnote, the Arabic original, but we question whether the Arabic is really the original. It has Tishran, which is October, the month in which he was born and also died. Right? That's a footnote that um, S.C. Milan put there in his 1882 translation. Now, they're trying to give you the impression that the Arabic is the original. But no, the Arabic is not the original. The original really is the Coptic and even the Sabian are the more originals of this because the original Septuagint was the Queen of Sheba's Bible. You know what I'm saying? We maintain that. We're, we're one of the first to really put that forward. You know what I'm saying? And also we're bringing the proof to prove that, that, that the Greek language did not give rise to Coptic, but actually from the Coptic, you know what I'm saying, came forward the Greek language. And the Coptic language, if you study it, is linked with the Sabian language. And the Sabians were Hebrew peoples who were descendants of Abraham's third wife, who was Keturah. You can check your Bible for that as well. So they were Hebrew peoples. Remember, it's the God of the Hebrews. That was the wisdom that was welling down in the Queen of Sheba and Nagish Makeda's soul. You understand that? Had her seek this wisdom. Now, Christ tells that the Queen of Sheba, the Queen of the South, she came from the ends of the earth, the end, the edges of the land. You understand? Some say from Yemen, some say from the Horn of Africa, but ancient Ethiopia, Tobia ruled a very large area. That's why we call it the Empire of Ethiopia. You understand? And in today's time, we're living in a Rastafari Commonwealth, which will be the foundation, you understand, for the um, restoration, you understand, of the monarchy, you understand, know which is the establishment of the African Zion in this very time. So we as Rastafari, you understand, know we play a very significant role in that manifestation. But we are responsible, you understand, know as the New Age priest kings. You understand, know we are the priest kings, 
you have not replaced the old order or the church age, the apostate church that has fallen off. This is what we keep saying that the documents, the language is very, very important for I and I. I and I can read. I and I can write. You understand? And if we're weak in our reading or writing, there's prayer, there's faith, and there's also the work that goes along with the faith, which is to practice. You understand? Which means to practice or study. You understand? Or do what you need to do according to that faith that you have. You understand? And be fully assured that if it's, if it's in His will, it says all things work toward the good of those who love Jah and are called according to His purpose. The thing you must be sure of is, is this his purpose? What is his will? You know what I'm saying? What is his will? This is what makes us truly brothers and sisters. Not because we have dreadlocks, not because we say Ethiopia, Ross. No, in John's sight, what makes us his children and make one and one brothers and sisters that we seek to do the will of our Father, of Kedus Abatachin, of Abba Kedus. But we need to know, well, what is that will? Now, Babylon ain't teaching us that. So we're going to have to establish other ways for us to learn and to study, like Rastafari used to say, groundation is foundation. You know what I'm saying? The groundation is foundation. If we're going to build a strong building, as Master said, that if the mason is able, right, and we know that our grand architect, that the author and the finisher of I and I faith is able, he is capable, and his materials are good. That's why he sent others away and said, thank you for coming. Next time, send the right people, the righteous people. You know what I'm saying? Not those who have a zeal, you know what I'm saying, for Ethiopia or a zeal for Rastafari, but those who have the knowledge and submit themselves to his will in faith. You know what I'm saying? In, 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 in the true faith. Therefore, they know the way, the truth, and the life. So right here, they say down here that the Ethiopic has December which is the 12th of Toxus, but that the so-called Arabic has Tishran, which is October. Now, that's a big difference. The difference between October, right, October and um, December is a big difference. Now, one would say, well, the Arabic must be correct, but I and I maintain that the Ethiopic is correct because the 12th of Toxus, right, the 12th of Toxus is actually this very date, the 12th of of, 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 of the 21st of, of December 2012. In other words, the 12th of Toxus is December 21st, 2012. This is what we've been trying to minister and, and, and get out there because as we were studying, we came across this. And we, and we kept checking it to make sure that this is what we're seeing, that we hear so much about the Mayan, the Mayan, the Mayan, the Mayan, the Mayan counter. So to a certain level and extent, we can safely say that there is some truth you know what I'm saying, in this date. But now the context of it, this is what we have to study. So now what occurs, what happens at this time? In chapter 21, 